and Gene Autry. I'm back in the saddle again. Out where a friend is a friend. Where the longhorns have a food on the road I'm back in the saddle again. That's right, folks. Another visit with all the gang here at Melody Ranch. Pat Buttram, Johnny Bond, the Cass County Boys, the Pinafores, Carl Cotner's Melody Ranch Orchestra, and yours truly, Charlie Lyon. But right now, meet the boss man himself, America's favorite cowboy, Gene Autry. I had me a gal in Tulsa, and I thought she was my own. But she up and left me for a waddy from San Antonio. She didn't even tell me that she was leaving me. Now I'm the lonesomest cowboy down in the cow country. Got the cowboy blues, I'm blue as I can be. That old lobo howling at the moon ain't got a thing on me. Got a long gone lonesome feeling that I just can't seem to lose. I'm just a lonesome cowboy singing the cowboy blues. I'll sell my horse and saddle and catch me a cattle train. Leave my troubles behind me and I'll never come back again. And if you ever see her, just tell her this for me. She may be the lonesomest cowboy down in the cow country. Got the cowboy blues, I'm blue as I can be. That old old bow howling at the moon ain't got a thing on me. Got a long gone lonesome feeling that I just can't seem to lose. I'm just a lonesome cowboy singing the cowboy blues. And now, neighbors, here's a tune that seems to be getting quite a play all over the country these days. Here is... Say the sun will never shine again And say the rose that blooms will never bloom again But come what may I know I must have you again my darling, say you're mine again. Say that spring will never come again. And say the chapel bells will never ring again. No matter what will be, I must be yours again. So, darling, say you're mine again. If I were to lose all the world and its treasures, who cares, let it be as it may. As long as I have you beside me, I'll And say I'll never hear a sweet refrain again And say that I was wrong and I'm to blame again But darling, say you're mine again If I were to lose all the world And say that I was wrong and I'm to blame again. But darling, say you're mine again. Well, thank you, kind friends. Many, many thanks. And now. How much is that hound dog in the winter? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. 
can't stand the competition, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look, bud, will you please shut up and tell me what this is all about? Okay, I will. In answer to an overwhelming demand, <laughs> the combined women's auxiliary of the Sagebrush Cultural Art Appreciation and Sheep Dipping Society <laughs> is staging a benefit, and they've asked me to help out. Seems they're looking for a new face. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Go get one. <laughs> very funny. Very funny. Oh, I'm sorry. Seriously, though, Patrick, old boy. Have you got anything actually prepared for this occasion? Are you kidding? <laughs> I have writ a play. You? A play? Yep. Just for yourself? Heck no. You're in this with me. Oh, good. That's you see, funny. when the curtain goes up, I come out. Sing, dance, tell a few jokes, then the curtain goes down again. But Patrick... Then no. the curtain goes up again, I come out, sing, dance, tell a few more jokes, then the curtain comes down now, again. Now, Pat, uh, Then the curtain goes up again, I come out... But... Something the matter? <laughs> yeah. Where do I come in? You kidding? You think that curtain works by itself? No. <laughs> oh, you got now, listen here, Patrick, that's not fair. Why... Why don't you work up something that both of us can do? Say, like, for instance, that act that we did last year at the Ranch Hands Ball. Remember, you and me got inside of one of those fake horses? Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Where you put me, I never did get to face the audience. <laughs> oh, sir. Now, now that. <laughs> oh, well, don't let it worry you. Worst comes to worst, we can always get the Blue Jeans and the Cass County Boys to sing a brand new spanking little ditty that goes something like this. Kids? <laughs> We're coming to the crossroads Should we turn to left or right? Mother is a-rockin' and a-waitin' But it's such a lovely night Let's walk that away, not this away That away we can be alone Take that throw on our chance to kiss away This away only leads to home Don't you think the valley road is shorter? We could save about a mile. Now and then the short road can be longer if you linger for a while. Let's walk that away, not this away. That away we can be alone. Take the throw and our chance to kiss away. This away only leads to home. Cheating heart will make you weep. You cry and cry and try to sleep, but sleep won't come the whole night through. Your cheating heart will tell on you when tears come down like falling rain. You toss around and call my name. The way I do Your cheating heart Will tell on you When tears come down Like falling rain You'll toss around Floor. 
just the way I do. Your cheating heart will tell on you. Well, thank you, neighbors. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Now, since once again it's storytelling time here at Melody Ranch, I thought I'd tell you all a yarn that, believe it or not, had me thinking I'd lost my mind for a while. At any rate, as I remember it all now, the first indication I had that my memory might be playing tricks on me was when I answered a loud banging at the front door early one morning. Just a minute, just a minute, I'm coming. Howdy, Gene. Well, for crying out loud, Sheriff Dillon. What are you doing out this time of the morning anyway, Jim? You mean... You mean you really don't know? No? Know what? Well, I... I still can't believe you'd... you'd do it. Hey, what is this? You sound like somebody's just been murdered. Somebody has, Gene. What... what are you talking about? I'm talking about your good friend, Chet Simmons. Oh? He was shot to death sometime during the night. Oh, no. How'd it happen? Well, let, let's put it this way. I ain't sure. But the Sagebrush County prosecutor is. Seems one of my deputies found a gun by the body with a brand and certain initials on it. Well, the, the bullet that killed Chet Simmons was fired from that gun. Whose gun was it? Yours. Now then, Mr. Autry, suppose we make this inquiry just as brief and to the point as possible. And that's fine with me. Good. First of all, is this your gun? It was my gun. I gave it to Chet Simmons several months ago. I see. And just why would you give him a gun? Because he collected them. And I didn't need this particular one, so I gave it to him. Yet is it not true that you and Simmons were, uh, shall we say, not on the best of terms as recently as three months ago? That's not true at all. We just had a slight disagreement over the location of a boundary fence between some of my property and some of his. Mm. And wasn't this disagreement finally settled in his favor? Nobody settled anything. I gave in to him. Reluctantly? I didn't say that. No, no, that's right, you didn't. Well, now then, isn't it also true that you owed money to Chester Simmons? That's right. I borrowed $2,000 from him 18 months ago to make some small improvements on my ranch. I see. Do you want to know what I think, Mr. Autry? I think Mr. Simmons called you over to his ranch late last night and asked you to pay him the balance of the money you owed him. You refused. A fight ensued, and you shot him. Very, very interesting. There's just one thing wrong with that story. I didn't leave my place last night. I see. And I suppose you have witnesses who will attest to that fact under Unfortunately, oath. Unfortunately, no. On Saturday night, my boys all go into town. <laughs> That'll be all for now, Mr. Autry. Better lock him up, Sheriff. Uh, who is it? Sheriff Dillon. That's right. My name is Arthur Simmons. I, I received your wire about my brother and got here as fast as I could. Oh, uh, uh, look, Mr. Simmons, suppose you wait outside for just a minute. I I'll be right with you. I see no reason for that, Sheriff. I think Mr. Simmons is entitled to know all the facts we have concerning his brother's death. Facts? You mean... You mean you know who... who... This is the man who killed your brother, Mr. Simmons. Why, you... Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, stop it. Now, that's no way to settle anything. I'm... I'm sorry. You're right. It's just that I... Well, I haven't seen my brother in over two years, and, well, I'm naturally just a little upset, I guess. You've got every right to be upset, Mr. Simmons. But let's all get one thing straight right now. I didn't kill your brother, regardless of what anybody has to say about it to the contrary. You can twist facts just so far. But somebody is trying to railroad justice around here. And I intend to find out who that somebody is. I, uh, I brought you some hot coffee. Thanks, Jim. How do you feel? How do you think I feel? Well, look, Gene, you're... Oh, doggone it, you're just about the best friend I got. You know, somehow I find it a little hard to believe. No, 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 I mean it. I mean it so much that... Well, if you did do this thing, I don't want to know about it. And if you didn't, I'll... I don't want to be around to see some highfalutin prosecutor crucify you with a lot of phony evidence. So that's why... 
This afternoon, I resigned as sheriff. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. I didn't mean what I said. You know that. Look, uh, will you take a chance with me? Hmm? Oh, well, what kind of a chance? Let me out of here for a few hours. What? Are you crazy? Maybe. I'll let you know later. It's 9.30 now. I'll be back here before midnight, whether I find out anything or not. How about it? Well, you know, they say there's no fool like an old fool. Well, all right, I'm going to find out. Go ahead. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, I was mountain champ out back. The moon was bright, so it took us a little over twenty minutes to make the six miles out to Simmons Ranch. When I got there, there wasn't a light in the place. So, quietly, I walked around back till I found an open window, climbed in. The sheriff had said Chet Simmons was shot while sitting at his desk in the front room. So, I turned on a small table lamp in the corner then started going over the room with a fine tooth comb. Fifteen minutes later, with the help of a torn ticket I found, partially hidden under the desk, I was pretty sure I knew the answer to who killed Chet Simmons. Oh, Gene. Gene, you're back. I said I'd be back, didn't I? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, what'd you find out, anything? Plenty, Jim. First, though, tell me, who's got all the articles that were taken from Chet Simmons' body? Well, I have uh, right here in my desk drawer. Good. Put them all together in a bag and come on. All right. I'll explain the rest of my plan on the way over to Mr. Art Simmons' room at the Longhorn Hotel. Howdy, Mr. Simmons. Uh, Sheriff. What in the world brings you over here to see me at this hour in the night? Well, uh, if you or your brother's personal belongings, Mr. Simmons, I thought you might like to have them. Belongings? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, come in, won't you? Uh, thanks, sure. I must say, this is most thoughtful of you. Oh, no, no, that, that's okay. Oh, here, I'll uh, just lay these things out on this table here for you. Thanks a lot, Sheriff. That, that gun... Was was that his? I, uh, yeah. Why? Oh, uh, no special reason, none at all. This whole thing has been such a shock to me, I'm afraid I'm well, I'm just a little upset, that's all. Oh, sure. That's okay, Mr. Simmons. I understand perfectly. Oh, now then, uh, about these things. Uh, uh, how about his pipe here? Uh, do you want to keep that? No, no, I'd, I'd rather not give it away, or better yet, uh, destroy it. All right. Uh, uh, how about this keychain? Oh, yes, I, I would like that, if you don't mind. You see, I I personally gave it to him several years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, this wallet? Oh, thanks, I'd like that, too. Well, don't you want to look inside it first? No, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure everything's there. Mm -hmm. You're the boss. Well, I guess that does it, except for this watch. I suppose you'd like that, too, wouldn't you? Why, yes, I... What's the matter? Something wrong? Where's the gold fob that was attached to this watch? Gold fob? Yes, and don't act as if you didn't know what I was talking about, Sheriff. This watch had an engraved solid gold fob. Are, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I saw it myself. Is uh, this what you're looking for? Autry. Uh, well, Sheriff, I demand you put this man back in jail where he belongs. Suppose you let me finish what I have to say first. Then if the sheriff still thinks I'm the one who belongs in jail, I'll be only too happy to go with him. Nothing of the kind. If you have anything to say, say it in court. For now, Mr. Simmons, let's call this a court. All right, go ahead, Gene. Thanks, Jim. Mr. Simmons, yesterday morning, when you first came into the sheriff's office, you said you hadn't seen your brother Chet in over two years. Yet, just now, you noticed a gold fob from your brother's watch that was missing. A fob you claim you saw with your own eyes. I didn't say that. Oh, yes, you did, Mr. Simmons. Both of us heard you. All right, all right. Suppose they did. What does that prove? I'm afraid it proves plenty. You see, your brother didn't have that fob until a month ago. What? The Ranchers Association gave it to him when he retired as its secretary. Therefore, you must have seen him recently. As recently, in fact, as the night you killed him. Well, Mr. Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, I killed my brother. 
And you know why? Because of a $50,000 insurance policy he carried payable to me. And you know something else? I'm still going to get it. Look out, Gene. He's got a gun. Yeah, I better put it down, Simmons. You've caused enough trouble already. Correction, Mr. Autry. I haven't. But I intend to finish the job right now. You can't get away with this, Simmons. Can I, Sheriff? <laughs> you just watch. First, you, Mr. Autry. Stand over there, facing that door. Okay. You're the boss. Drop it, Simmons. No, 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 okay, okay. Oh, nice going, Gene. What, what are you going to do with me? Suppose we leave that part to a judge and jury. Right now, you better put the cuffs on him, Jim. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, one other thing. If he's going to be staying in my old cell, better warn him about the hot water. It comes out of the coal faucet. And so that was the end of the story. Just in case you're wondering, though, what I found out at Chet Simmons' ranch, making me suspicious of his brother Art in the first place, well, sir, it was a Rimrock movie theater ticket. You see, that's where Art Simmons lived. It was dated August 5th, and since Chet was killed on August 6th, I was almost positive Art Simmons had taken the train over here, killed his brother, taken the train back, and then waited for Sheriff Dillon to call him telling him his brother had been killed. Incidentally, if we hadn't caught up with him on that missing watch, Bob, I had some other traps baited for him, too. For instance, that pipe wasn't really Chet's. And I'd removed three $100 bills from his wallet. Any one of them could have caused Art Simmons to say something self-incriminating. Yes, it's just like I've always said. Crime doesn't pay. But... I guess the jail will always be full of guys trying to prove that I'm a liar. Right now, we get on to one more pleasant things in life, namely music. Incidentally, I can't think of a single song that better illustrates mu music's wonderful descriptive powers than this next song. Truly a cowboy classic in every sense of the word. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Home, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play Where seldom is heard A discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day how often at night When the heavens are bright With the light from the glittering stars Have I stood there amazed And asked as I gazed If their glory exceeds that of ours Discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy All day Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells Days ringing out the glory of the Lamb Hear them bells, don't 
to hear them bells. Days are ringing out the glory of the land. The house is getting old and the benches are worn and the Bible am I getting hard to read. But the spirit am there just as sure as you're born and I got all the comfort that I need. Hear them bells, bells, don't you hear them bells? Hear them bells, days are ringing out the glory of the land. Hallelujah! Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells? Hear them bells, days are ringing out the glory of the land. We work all day in the cotton and the corn till the feet and the hands are sore. Praying to Gable Boy to blow his horn so we won't have to work no more. And I hear that chariot a-coming this way I know it's coming for me But the bells keep a-ringing out the gospel light For the glory of the Lamb to see Hear them bells, bells. don't you hear them bells? Hear them bells, days are ringing out the glory of the Lamb Hallelujah! Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells? Hear them bells, days are ringing out the glory of the Lamb Hear them bells Cease to shine, dear, till the sand of the desert grows cold, till the last petal falls from the roses, and the silver in your hair turns to gold, till the sun and the moon hide in darkness, and we wait for that great day to shine. Oh, my darling, that's how long I will love you Till the end of the world you'll be mine Till the sun and the moon hide in darkness And we wait for that great light to shine Oh, my darling, that's how long I will love you Till the end of the world, you'll be mine have been listening to Melody Ranch with Johnny Bond, Pat Buttram, the Cass County Boys, the Pinafores, Carl Kotner, and America's favorite cowboy, Gene Autry. Charlie Lyon speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.